Good morning and welcome to the virtual worship service of the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House of Provincetown, where we affirm the worth and dignity of every person and encourage each other in our spiritual search for truth and meaning. My name is Reverend Kate Wilkinson, and I am so glad that you have joined us this week. This week is a special service because it is our blessing of the animals. And after the YouTube service, if you'd like to tune into our Zoom coffee hour, we will have an opportunity to introduce each other to our pets and to give them a blessing. Of course, not everyone has a pet, so those of us who don't can enjoy the pets of others and get some joy from interacting with those animals. Right now, I'd like to invite you to join me in this sacred time and center ourselves by lighting a candle. As I light our chalice here in the sanctuary, I invite you to light a candle wherever you are. In that way, we can feel connected even as we are apart. When your best friend has four or so legs. What it means to have a pet is to love someone who speaks a language you do not. A dog will bow and prance, a cat will purr and blink, a guinea pig will giggle and squeak. A long time ago, a friend of mine had a dog with soft ears and considered herself the pup's guardian. A gentle way to think of protecting and caring for a friend. Such a small gesture of respect for a source of boundless love. The dog's long pink tongue lolling in a goofy grin. The cat convinced that kneading and grooming are crucial to this day. A bird asking for a treat, bending a wing to wave. These are friends. These are loves. It's a kind of surprise that you should love someone so much who would eat the butter on the table if they could get away with it and get endless hair on the sofa when they aren't even supposed to be on the furniture. When they are called companion animals, it's such an open, tender truth. The endless cuddles and tricks and loyalty, the comfort of fingers to fur and big, adoring eyes. These are friends, they are loves. They stretch our hearts and fill them with their abundance of kindness. When they are gone, our hearts remain larger, though their absence leaves room for expanses of grief. Their love champions and companions us still. Spirit of life, come to me, sing in my heart, all stirrings of passion, all in the winds, rise in the affirm our covenant. Love is the spirit 
of this meeting house. And this is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. In her novel, Gilead, Marilyn Robinson writes from the perspective of Reverend John Ames, a dying, retired congregational minister, composing a letter to his young son. In this passage, Reverend Ames reflects on a moment from his own childhood. Now, this might seem a trivial thing to mention, considering the gravity of the subject, but I truly don't feel it is. We were very pious children from pious households in a fairly pious town, and this affected our behavior considerably. Once we baptized a litter of cats. It occurred to one of my sisters to swaddle them up in doll's clothes. There was only one dress, which was just as well, since the cats could hardly tolerate a moment in it and would have to be unsaddled as soon as they were christened in any case. I myself moistened their brows, repeating the full Trinitarian formula their grim old crooked-tailed mother found us baptizing away by the creek and began carrying her babies off by the napes of their necks. We lost track of which was which, but we were fairly sure that some of the creatures had been born away still in the darkness of paganism, and that worried us a great deal. I still remember how those warm little brows felt under the palm of my hand. Everyone has petted a cat, but to touch one like that with the pure intention of blessing it is a very different thing. It stays the mind. For years, we would wonder what, from a cosmic viewpoint, we had done to them. It still seems to me to be a real question. Reverend Ames concludes, there is a reality in blessing. It doesn't enhance sacredness, but it acknowledges it. And there is power in that. I have felt it pass through me, so to speak. Then sensation is one of really knowing a creature. I mean, really feeling its mysterious life and your own mysterious life at the same time.
Our animals bring us so much joy, don't they? We asked some young people in our congregation, what is the best thing about having animals around? And here is what they said. It's nice to have animals to, that live with you because they're smart, funny, reliable, and sweet. It's fun to play catch. It's fun to listen to them make noise. I love dogs. You like dogs? They teach us, yeah. They teach us responsibilities to get up in the Amen. morning early and walk them, Amen. water them, and feed them, and get, take them for exercise. Great. Now tell us how many animals you have. What do you have? We have 10 chickens, one dog, one, one fish, fish. two ducks, and one fish. One fish? What about the bees? And the bees. I will. Thank you for those great answers. This summer, we adopted a kitten from a local animal shelter. We were feeling lonely during this pandemic, and we wanted something to cuddle and to feel close to. To me, the best thing about having an animal is how they keep you company. My new kitten, Millie, keeps me company, sort of. She is always by my side now. While I'm doing puzzles. Hey, Millie, no, that's not how we do puzzles. While I'm taking care of my house plants. Millie, no, don't eat the cactus. You're going to hurt yourself. While I'm reading the newspaper. Millie, no, no. That's not how we read the newspaper. Stop it. While I'm doing my spiritual practices. Hey, that's my candle. Where are you going? Even while I'm filming my minister's minutes. Oh, do you want to be in this one, Millie? I think you do. As you can see, we have not exactly been successful in training or taming Millie. <laughs> she has done a pretty good job of training us, though. Sometimes it's hard to know who is taming who. There is a scene in the book, The Little Prince, where he encounters a fox. Who are you? asked the little prince and added, you are very pretty to look at. I am a fox, the fox said. Come and play with me, proposed the little prince. I am so unhappy. I cannot play with you, the fox said. I am not tamed. Oh, please excuse me, said the little prince. But after some thought, he added, what does that mean, tame? It is an act too often neglected, said the fox. It means to establish ties. To establish ties. Just that, said the fox. To me, you are still nothing more than a little boy who is just like a 100,000 other little boys and I have no need of you, and you, on your part, have no need of me. To you, I am nothing more than a fox like a hundred thousand other foxes. But if you tame me, then we shall need each other. To me, you will be unique in all the world. To you, I shall be unique in all the world. I am beginning to understand, said the little prince. There is a flower. I think she has tamed me. It is possible, said the fox. One only understands the things that one tames, said the fox. Men have no more time to understand anything. They buy things already made at the shops. But there is no shop anywhere where one can buy friendship. And so men have no friends anymore. If you want a friend, tame me. 
What must I do to tame you? asked the little prince. You must be very patient, replied the fox. First, you will sit down at a little distance from me, like that in the grass. I shall look at you out of the corner of my eye, and you will say nothing. Words are the source of misunderstandings. But you will sit a little closer to me every day. The next day, the little prince came back. It would have been better to come at the same hour, said the fox. If, for example, you come at four o'clock in the afternoon, then at three o'clock I shall begin to be happy. I shall feel happier and happier as the hour advances. At four o'clock I shall already be worrying and jumping about. I shall show you how happy I am. But if you come at just any time, I shall never know at what hour my heart is to be ready to greet you. One must observe the proper rites. What is a right? asked the little prince. Those are actions too often neglected, said the fox. They are what make one day different from other days, one hour from other hours. So the little prince tamed the fox. And now here is my secret, a very simple secret, the fox said. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. Men have forgotten this truth, said the fox, but you must not forget it. You become responsible forever for what you have tamed. You become responsible forever for what you have tamed. We got a cat because we wanted something to cuddle during these hard times. Our new cat, Millie, is not a cuddler. <laughs> we have not tamed her yet. I'm not convinced that we ever will. But she does this thing where she lies next to you and she reaches out her back feet and just lightly touches you as if she's checking just to see if you are still there. She will leave her feet there, touching your body, as if she really wants to be connected, but only wants to do it on her terms, terms that feel safe and distanced enough to honor her past experiences. I have some friendships like this, I long to cuddle her, but I enjoy these moments of her feet on my body, the slight pressure of our connection reminding me, too, that I am not alone. In those moments of connection, I'm not really sure who is blessing who, but it does feel like a blessing. As Reverend Ames said, there is a reality in blessing. It doesn't enhance sacredness, but it acknowledges it. And there is power in that. I have felt it pass through me. The sensation is one of really knowing a creature. I mean, really feeling its mysterious life and your own mysterious life at the same time. Today, we honor our animal companions. 
We honor that there is no shop in the world where we can buy friendship. We honor the patience it takes to cultivate trust and relationship. We honor the chance to feel the mysterious life of the animals and our own mysterious life at the same time. Today we take part in the rite of the blessing of the animals, setting aside this day to make it different than other days, other hours. It is the day we bless the animals and are blessed by them in return. I close with this blessing by Reverend Christine Robinson. Surrounded by the animals we love, we remember with gratitude the pets, protectors, and animal companions who have blessed our lives. We give thanks for our childhood pets who taught us to love and to cry. We give thanks for our children's pets who help us to teach them responsibility and relationship. And we give thanks for the pets who brighten our days and comfort our nights. Surrounded by beloved pets, we remember that many animals suffer. We remember that some animals are hunted or deserted or hungry. We remember that nature can be cruel and that people can be mean. We remember and want to help. Surrounded by the animals we love, we know that many animals contribute to our lives. We give thanks for all those animals who help us, worker animals who guard us and find our lost and guide the blind, the animals who provide us food and clothing, who tote our burdens and entertain us with their antics, and for animals who give their lives to help us learn. Spirit of life, help us to remember that we live and work and love among the animals. Help us to be their friends, to love them and care for them and protect them from harm, to thank them when we use their lives for ours. Especially this morning, Spirit of Life, bless these animals who are the companions of our lives. Hear our outpouring of love and gratitude for them and help us translate that into love and gratitude for all your creatures. We bless these animals we love. We pledge to care for them tenderly and faithfully and to remember that we are not alone on the earth. Amen and blessed be.